These files are property of the Republic Archives. Possession of these files by unauthorized individuals is prohibited by law, under Act 190. If you are an unauthorized individual in possession of these files, we heavily advise you return them to your local branch of the Interplanetary Police Force under threat of 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 Records from the Reva, Act 2, Episode 3, FX4YJ. Written by Boudicca Eads and Nolan Edward Finley. to you too. And I'm not going to talk to you. All right then, don't. Right, yeah, because you've been sent here just to look at me. There are worse things. Really? Nothing? Prison changes you. Right, of course. I, uh, so... Why are you actually here? Thought you weren't talking to me. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I care about you. Just remember that. Yeah? But I'm not going to sit here and lie to you. You've had enough of that already. They've sent me down here to get your statement, and I'm not leaving until I get one. Can't you just plug me in and wait until I start spitting numbers? I'm a machine after all. Do you want that? Take a guess. <laughs> Good. Because I don't want that either. You're much too... human. Do you know how difficult it is to get answers out of anything with even a scrap of sentience? Yes. Right. Of course. Sorry. Sorry. Everyone always forgets. I, uh, I wasn't always this. I, I had a life. Is that the start of your statement? Oh, so that's what you want. A sob story to make you feel better. I can give you that. Oh, it's so sad. I was turned into a cyborg and can't remember loving my parents. How tragic. Really, I had so much potential. It's such a shame. Etc. 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 Is that enough for you? No, Jacob. I care about you. I know you don't really want those to be your last words, and... How... how could you know what I want? You barely know me. Aren't you here to gather evidence with that big list of questions? No. I want, I need your last words. Should you be proven guilty? When I get proven guilty. Is that an admission? No. Right. We went on one date, Teddy. One stupid date at my friend's stupid party. We barely even got to have a proper conversation. You don't have to pretend it meant anything to you. But it did. I asked to come here, you know. I wasn't just sent to manipulate you or whatever. (laughs) Sure. Really, I promise. I'm just here to help you. Help me? Right. How did you even know I was in here? 
I'm pretty sure they're keeping it top secret. Let's just say I have friends in high places. This is Investigator Ezra Barnett reporting for duty from the dead end corridor outside my office. The tech guys have invaded my sanctuary and are bringing in the big guns to fix the speakers. Technically, I could continue to use the office without them. There's plenty of spare audio equipment I could use, but it's not the same. So I told them I'll get back to hunting the crew down as soon as my darling speakers are fixed. That did the trick. I did not, however, anticipate that I would be kicked to the curb, so to speak. Left to my own devices to burrow further into the depths of eternity. Forced to take... (sighs) break. But I'm not to be trifled with. I managed to smuggle some of the physical documentation I have yet to review out of my office. So now I'm here, in this hallway, with a recorder and some of FX4YJ's medical notes. Let's see what's happening here. Documentation of medical procedures concerning one FX4YJ, formerly known as Jacob Fields. 21st of the second quarter, 7078. Written by Dr. F.M. Edisford. The patient woke up this morning at 10.06 a.m. After his 19-hour nap, this could be counted as quite a relief. Although initially distressed, our nurses soon calmed him down. His first coherent request was, quote, a bite to eat, end quote. His retina display remained covered for now. As we're still leaking from it a solution we have yet to identify fully, it appears to be something like oil with some trace amounts of blood, although I can't be certain. In addition to the aforementioned retinas, sections of the patient's skull were removed and replaced with a steel plating. Much of his brain was replaced with an artificial structure, Three ribs were also replaced alongside the windpipe, the left ear, and several teeth. Many muscles have also had to be artificially replaced. As far as these kinds of surgeries goes, FX4YJ is incredibly sophisticated, very possibly the smoothest transfer I have ever performed. It is likely he will keep most of his memories and even key personality traits. The results are almost unnoticeable due to the nature of his wounds those being mostly trauma to the head and brain. Due to damage on his parietal lobe, he may experience some problems with his somatic senses, less sensitivity to temperature, higher pain tolerance, minor issues with touch and texture, along with some minor loss of motor coordination. But this shouldn't be an issue and pales in regard to what he gained from this operation. In a few weeks, he should be up and running as per usual, and we can send him back to the academy, where he will be transferred from field training to the analyst division. I don't know that Jacob was transferred. I suppose most cyborgs are removed from their chosen fields to the analyst division. It's a nice, safe space where they can't accidentally hurt anyone or overheat or, well, do much of anything. But it's a procedure, and it's certainly one that saves lives. I think I'd rather die than become a cyborg. Or, actually, it would be nice to just have the answers. Definitely make my job easier, that's for sure, but, uh, yeah, it seems to involve a whole lot of tampering. I'm not usually peeved by things. On the contrary, I'd happily dig my teeth into centuries worth of death records. I've even watched an old-timey horror flick on the odd occasion accompanied by a nice bottle and the finest potato waffles my local store has to offer, but... (sighs) Oil and blood. Two things that certainly shouldn't mix. (sighs) Not an image I needed in my mind. (sighs) Actually, I may have to take a moment, my friend. I just need some fresh air.
What about your parents? How did they feel about your change? The same as other parents, I guess. Happy I was alive, sad that they would never see me again. Now that I was property of the state. I think it should have hurt me more. It probably would do, but... But whenever I look in my mind for them, it's... It's like they're not there. Or they are, but it's like the emotions are gone. Like I can remember, but I can't feel. You get me? I guess it's hard to think about memory without feeling. I don't think your mind's supposed to work like that. Maybe that's why it's also fuzzy. Uh huh. Is that the same for all emotions then? Uh, fuzzy? <clears throat> so, um, what about Ren, for example? How about that? Him. Him. You already know this. It's standard procedure. I know. Right. Of course you do. Of course. If I killed him, do you really think I'd put up this much of a fight? What do you mean? If I'm gonna die anyway, why lie? Why waste the effort? Your legacy. <laughs> legacy? What legacy? We're not all like you, Theodore. We don't all have grandmothers on the council. Who's gonna give a shit what happens to a lowly cyborg? Okay, I'm, s I'm sorry. I guess... I don't really know what your life's been like. Yeah, no shit. So, you wanna tell me then? About your parents? Not much to say about them. It might help me understand. I... <sighs> sure. It's not like I have anything better to do. <clears throat> well, after that, let's return to these notes, shall we? And... Ah, oh, shit. Hey, Ezra. Are you okay? You looked... I'm fine. What are you doing? Working. On the floor? <laughs> I suppose I've seen you do worse. What do you mean you've seen me do worse? Where? How? Well, you know, one hears things about the office. One sees things about the office. Just stuff, you know? Right. For example, you yell at people a lot. You yell at me a lot. I do? You do. Oh. <clears throat> I, um, I never noticed. You don't notice a lot, do you? I'm the fit... Be careful. Have some coffee. It'll help. You could damage the... Well, have fun with your... work. I don't really have anything else I can tell you about my parents. They're decent people. They're both still alive, as far as I know. Great. fan fucking tastic Couldn't even tell you their names. Everyone... Everyone who matters knows my actual family is here aboard the Reaver. Why waste our breath on two people I haven't seen in a decade? So, your fellow cadets, you consider them family? Are you seriously asking me that? For the record? Yes, of course I do. I've known everyone in Unit 42 pretty much my whole life. I've been on the Reaver ever since my surgery. Yes, this is my family. And I assume... Being that close, you must know a lot about your fellow cadets. Wow. And to think for a second there, I actually thought you might have been interested in me. I am. I'm also interested in any information you have that might be able to assist your defense. My defense? Of course. If you're not guilty. I don't have a defense. Everyone does. <laughs> not me. Your friends, you're scared of what they might think of you, what they already believe. Uh-huh. And what do they believe? You don't want to know. No, really. What do they believe? Sky thinks you did it. So does K. So does AJ. 
So tell me, what are you trying to protect here? Because they don't seem to be extending the same courtesy to you. Stop. Just stop pretending you know anything about me. I'm not pretending. I care about you. No. Tell me about Ingrid. No. Okay, okay. Don't get so serious on me, God. You'd think the world was ending. (laughs) I don't trust you. You don't need to trust me. I'm just here to make you say whatever it is you want to say. Fuck off. Ha ha. Does it help you to know that I want you to trust me? (laughs) No, not really. Right. Does it help you to know? I still think you're really cute. (laughs) No, no, it doesn't. You sure about that? As sure as I've ever been. Wow. That's a bold statement coming from you. I don't imagine you like being wrong. Oh no, the poor cyborg without his wires. What is he? How can he be sure of anything? Is that what you're suggesting? Why don't you tell me? I can't believe they gave me you. They could have sent anyone. You're... (laughs) Handsome? Astonishingly so? Oh, Lord, help me. You know it's unethical? Flirting with someone who literally can't escape? Who says I'm flirting? I... Can't you just leave? I've given you what you want, haven't I? I... Actually... I don't think we're done with your statement. No, not yet. I sense you haven't quite come to terms with yourself. Shared all your woes, confessed all your sins, etc., etc. Basically. 23rd of the second quarter, 7078. Today I have a meeting with FX4YJ's parents. They saw their son in the ward. This is likely the last time they will see him. Sometimes I feel remorse for the parents who have to make the choice between watching their child die or letting them live knowing that they can never see each other again. Sometimes. But then being a cyborg isn't really like being alive at all. It's more being not dead. There's a difference. At least FX4YJ will be more alive than most cyborgs. He's also very likely going to be a danger to himself and others. Not much I can do about that now. We'll just have to hope nurture overtakes nature in this one. I've thought about connecting him to another bigger machine, something to siphon off some of his power just to be safe, but the operations will be complicated. Of course, complications always make operations more fun. His Ingrid always had magic, so volatile? I think so. Yes, as long as I've known her. And has she ever been suspicious? Prone to hiding things? Harbored any traitorous ideas? No. She's loyal to a fault. To what? The Republic? Her friends? What are you getting at? Okay, moving on. Teddy, what are you getting at? Are my friends in danger? No, no, of course not. We just like to get any information on file, in case... I die? Kay, what about her? Look, you keep saying you're on my side, but you won't answer any of my questions. If you want me to talk, you're going to have to explain why. I'm just getting your statement. Stop lying! I'm not... Well, you're trying awfully hard not to tell me something, so I'd say that's lying, wouldn't you? I'm starting to fear that I have made a mistake. FX4YJ is not just more advanced than any other cyborg yet created. He is also more volatile. His propensity for emotion goes beyond even the most sophisticated of models. This could prove... dangerous. I need to find him an anchor, and soon. But I'm stumped on what kind of machine uses enough energy to sap the life out of him. What I can use is an overflow lane into which he can pour all these extra human feelings, something big, with enough output to combat the issues that may arise. 
Something that won't overheat with sentience. A ship. It has to be a ship. They already tend to have sentient AI. <laughs> Somewhat sentient. <clears throat> <clears throat> enough aliveness that the connection won't be too different, but not quite enough that it would mean anything or do any real harm. I shall attempt to connect FX4YJ to a ship, preferably the one he's posted on. Everyone would be none the wiser. FX4YJ stops being a weapon of mass destruction. As long as he is connected to a ship, to others he is a highly sophisticated cyborg. To me, well, I can do what I want with him. After all, he is my invention. <sighs> Fine. I won't try. I clearly can't keep lying to you. I need you to listen, okay? I have been sent to get your statement. I wasn't lying about that. But this is not a standard statement. This is not a standard situation. Do you go on? I'll just cut to the chase. Do you know anything about a terrorist group known as the people of Earth? Do I know? What an interesting question. Why don't you just plug me in and find out, huh? I'm not asking if you could know. I'm sure the information is out there somewhere. I'm asking if you, the human part of you, know. Right now, in this moment. The human part of me? Yes. No. Jacob, I'm trying to help you. I need to know if you've seen any suspicious activity among your peers. We are under threat. And if there's anything, anything you can tell me, Jacob, it could mean getting you out of this. You know I'm innocent. I know no such thing. Well, then I don't know anything either. Do you have reason to believe your unit knows anything about this group? No. I really do like you, Jacob. As you keep saying... You really have nothing? Hand on heart. Is that the honest truth? <laughs> like you care about honesty or truth. So, I guess we're done then. I think we are. The notes appear to go on in the same way for a number of weeks. Dr. Edisford giving updates on FX4YJ's recovery, theories for connecting him to a ship, which I have come to the conclusion must be the Reaver. Everything is as expected until this, the final entry. <clears throat> FX4YJ, I have worked on many a man and child in my time and created something incredible out of them made them practical, functional, made them useful to the Republic like no other living being could and would ever be. I have created great things, but not once have I created something beautiful. My cyborgs may be super intelligent, but I don't believe I have ever created anything that could transcend humanity the way I have made FX4YJ. <clears throat> the government appears to have found out and haven't taken kindly to the fact that I am hiding a weapon only I can control. I fear that they will destroy my life's work, but it's already too late. All I can do is hope that someday someone reads this and knows what I managed to do, the greatness I have achieved. Following the copy of Dr. Edisford's notes that I have been given is a short report by the unit that arrested her and seized both these notes and FX4YJ. In it, they detail the plans to perform the operation linking FX4YJ to one of the Imperial Academy ships, warning that afterwards the cyborg should, under no circumstances, be separated from his anchor, Ship 37, the Reaver. Well, well, I don't see how any of that is helpful to the case at hand. 
So what if FX4YJ is a very sophisticated cyborg? We already knew that. It's obvious from his interactions with fellow cadets that he feels emotions, has a personality, memories, a rich internal world. This whole day has gotten me nowhere. And I, for one, can't wait until... Looks like they fixed my speakers. This episode featured an order of appearance. Jack Fairweather as Jacob Fields, Michael Podbury as Teddy, Akiva Vita as Investigator Ezra Barnett, and Sleepy Skull as Bly Monroe. Written by Boudicca Eads and Nolan Edisford Finley. Directed and produced by Boudicca Eads. With sound design by Afrobum, Mark Trafal, Nolan Edisford Finley, and Boudicca Eads. Music written and produced by Mark Trafal, Louis Trafal, and Rudy Reeves McHugh. Graphic design by Boudicca Eads. Special effects not made in-house can be found in the description.